Hi, friends. Another guest hosted Together Run today. And I am excited that we have Jennifer taking over for us from Asheville, North Carolina. And you are really going to enjoy this one. Um, she gets pretty real, as we tend to do in these Together Runs. If you would like to f- host a Together Run, feel free to send me some uh Send me an email and I'll send you some information. But without any further ado, let's pass over to Jennifer. Hello, my name is Jennifer. I'm from Asheville, North Carolina. And I thought I would host a Together Run today. I'm going to be running along a river, this beautiful greenway. Uh, we have some decent weather today. It's a little cloudy, but fairly warm, which is uh, something of a blessing in early February, although I know many people live in much colder places. So going to get started here. All right, and let's go. All right, if you want to, before you begin, let's do a nature check. Um, as Tina always tells us, touch something in nature. I'm going to stop here. It's a beautiful boulder. Just going to touch that. There's some moss growing on a couple of sides. Granite or something. You know, I used to be very interested in geology, but it's been a long time. All right. Once you're done, let's get back to our run. Just easy pace for me. Um, since the weather is nice, there are several other runners out here. Have a little bit of a breeze. Hope it's not too distracting, but uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, so once we're on our way, settling into our groove here, Let's go ahead and do our physical check. So I could really use this today, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, it's been a pretty hectic day at work. Um, all sorts of requests from various people. <laughs> I'm sure you can relate to that. <laughs> so let's go ahead and loosen everything up by focusing first on the top of our head. So I like to really think about this part of my body, um, the scalp muscles. Um, it's not something I was very conscious of for a long time, but I realize it can get really tense up there. And I think I'll slow my pace so I'm not uh, breathing too hard in your ear. But yeah, so continuing to think about that, the top of your scalp, back of your head, just check in those back of the shoulder muscles, those tend to lock up for me, especially during a stressful day at work. So just breathe some oxygen into those areas. It's amazing the concept of breathing. It's so simple, but so powerful. And I think if more people were vigilant, if we as individuals were more vigilant, (laughs) excuse me, we might be able to be in a more relaxed state more of the time, which, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. (laughs) You know, I could have a more positive experience overall impact people in more positive ways. These are some of the thoughts that occurred to me when I'm uh, out here running. Lots of people walking their dogs. All right, continuing down the body a bit, front of your chest back between your shoulder blades. Both of these areas can kind of get locked up. 
especially if you work at a computer all day. A lot of us tend to hunch over. So going down your spine, spine is your lifeline. I always like to really concentrate and focus some energy running up and down your spine. Just bringing new energy into your body. Bringing sunshine. If you're lucky enough to have it, which I am not today, but uh, a little make-believe sunshine. <laughs> it's one of the things I try to live by, you know. Life doesn't always give us sunshine, so sometimes we have to manufacture our own. <laughs> All right, and then going down your legs. See how your quads feel, how your hamstrings feel. My hamstrings were a bit uh, tight yesterday. I went for a long trail run on Sunday um, and it, it was a blast. <laughs> Took a well-deserved rest the day after. Um, so I'm just, easing back into the routine today. And then keep moving down your ankles, tops of your feet, the bottoms of your feet. This is an interesting one for me. Think about your feet and really try to focus on relaxing those muscles. I find that I get fatigued a lot quicker if the muscles in my feet tighten up. And that's another thing that I haven't always been conscious of. So if there are any other areas you want to take a moment, breathe some energy into. Any areas that might be a little stiff or just calling out for a little extra love and attention today. I am passing under a bridge here with a little bit of traffic. So I'll give it a moment. All right, now that we've done our physical check in, let's talk about mentally. How are you feeling? Um, in true uh, together run fashion, I am not going to say I'm fine, um, but I'm also not horrible. Um, as I mentioned before, it's been a stressful day. It's been uh, a stressful week, to be honest, at work, some other things going on in my personal life as the pandemic stretches on. But as it also kind of seems to be uh, lessening, perhaps, I don't know. It kind of seems that way and I, I'm so conflicted. Uh, is it true? Who do we believe? Who is it okay to trust these days, you know? Uh, and then by the same token, you know, it's the thing that we've been hoping for and waiting for for so long. Uh, but then there's this degree of anxiety that comes with it. You know, <laughs> I suddenly find myself uh, fielding emails and calls from my boss asking if I would like to visit the head office for a get together with the entire company. Uh, in New York City. <laughs> a little cue the nervous laughter from me there. <laughs> um, I don't know about you, but um, I will admit, I don't think I'm quite ready uh, for a number of reasons. Luckily, my boss is very understanding of that, um, and I hope he continues to be. So, those are some of the things that are on my mind. Uh, at the same time, I'm feeling hopeful and excited. Um, in about a week and a half, 
I will be spending a long weekend with a good friend, which is <laughs> a much welcome mental refresh. I haven't done that in, well, <laughs> probably for the length of the pandemic, honestly. Um, I have some chronic health issues, which could put me at higher risk uh, for serious uh, COVID infection or long COVID. I am triple vexed. <laughs> uh, but even so, you know, the, the data about the efficacy, we're just not quite sure yet. So I've been very conservative with my activities. And while I don't regret that, it has made for some intense moments over the past two, two and a half years now. So I've kind of rambled on a little bit there. <laughs> so let me ask you again, how are you doing? Can say it out loud, say it in your mind. Sometimes I find even if I'm alone, just giving voice to some of those feelings whether they're negative or positive or somewhere in the middle, really releases something, brings them into the real world, makes them real. So I'll pause my monologue for a few moments, let you answer. to a quieter part of the trail now, I believe. <laughs> and, uh, I'm in this very green area, so this part of the country, uh, we do have autumn here, of course, but there are a lot of plants that stay green all year round. So when you do get these random warm days or early spring days, um, you already have some greenery to look at. And, I find that really nice. Um, even though I also enjoy a nice snowy landscape. How about you? What kind of landscapes do you prefer? Um, or do you have a preference? I think it's important to find beauty in everything. Uh, no matter what kind of environment you find yourself in. Cityscape, countryside somewhere in between the two. Now the trees have opened up. And I have this nice panoramic view of the river. It's very soothing uh, after a long day of work just to look at some water after looking at a screen all day. You know, I thought I would feel more awkward than I do recording this. Um, so far, no one's really looked at me, <laughs> strangely. I mean, I don't mind, but uh, I guess uh, I'm in a place where all types are welcome, <laughs> which is nice. So, as we go on here, sorry about that, should have muted my watch. It's actually a newer watch and I'm not sure I've quite figured out how <laughs> to mute it yet. So I apologize for that. So let's, let's talk about our senses now. And I'm gonna start with what is the most obvious to me on this particular run, which is what I'm hearing. And it's the most remarkable thing. I'm gonna slow to walk for a moment because I can hear an owl. <laughs> I just love owls. Oh, I hear footsteps. Another runner. I hear squirrels um, rustling around in the leaves under the trees. 
I hear other birds chirping, hear the sound of the river, hear some traffic in the distance as people start to get on their way, hit the roads. And I feel grateful that I have this moment of relative calm and solitude out here with all of you. All right, let's think about uh, what we see now. I mentioned a moment ago I had a nice panorama of the river. Um, I also see the greenery, as I mentioned, this nice wide uh, greenway, paved greenway. Um, I typically think of myself as a trail runner, but I also really appreciate these spaces that the city has provided for people. It's such an easy way to get some activity, experience the outdoors, a little closer to home for many people. With her. With her. They already had <laughs> also see some street lights. I love seeing street lights. Um, love that glow around them. I enjoy oil painting. I wouldn't call myself an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but um, I do have fun with it. And one of my challenges is painting points of light in a dark landscape, uh, such as street lights or headlights. So whenever I see street lights like this, when the light around me is kind of, you know, that half daylight, I try to really take it in, absorb it, think about how I might paint that. Think about how the light reflects off of the uh, water particles and how that creates this little halo effect. This is a very humid part of the country. It's actually um, officially a temperate rainforest. So there is a lot of moisture in the air in any season, which makes for some really cool light effects and sunsets. And uh, it's very pretty. If you've never been to the Carolinas, highly recommend coming and checking out both states. I've lived in both states. Uh, as well as other states and um, Japan, South Korea. <laughs> it occurs to me, I seem to always live in very humid places. <laughs> I wonder, wonder why that's a theme with me. All right, here's a little trail section, little natural surface to break it up just a bit. So we talked about what we hear, what we see, how about what we feel. I feel a little bit of a cool breeze. I've just crossed onto a boardwalk, so I feel the individual boards under my feet. And I love the sound. <laughs> I'm cheating a bit, going back to what I hear, but I just really enjoy that. I feel my fingertips against my palms, getting a little chilly. But not too bad. Being a southerner, I think I get cold. <laughs> Probably a little easier than a lot of you. <laughs> so I shouldn't complain. All right, let's go on to uh, taste. I, this is always a difficult one for me. Um, I had a little bit of banana with almond butter, maple almond butter before I left to come out here. Unfortunately, I don't really taste it anymore, <laughs> um, but that's the last real identifiable taste I think I've had today. So we'll just, uh, you know, call it that. <laughs> So what are we missing here? We have sight, sound, taste, touch, smell. 
What do you smell right now? I'm passing under an old railroad bridge. Trestle, I think it's called. Um, and there are a bunch of like dead or dormant weeds here on either side of me. I'm in kind of a little covered walkway now. And I can smell, I smell those dried leaves. You know that smell? Um, it's very nice, very pleasant. I can smell the water from the river a little bit. <laughs> it's not unpleasant. Uh, it's not that kind of, you know, sometimes you'll have a stinky river, but no, this is just that nice soothing water smell. Nothing particularly offensive, <laughs> thankfully. Give it a moment. If there are any senses uh, that particularly stand out to you today, maybe linger on them for a moment. Give them a split second meditation. And now I can hear people laughing ahead of me on the trail. It's always nice, the sound of joy something we didn't hear much of early in the pandemic, right? So I find it really refreshing to hear people laughing and be near them and know that in an outdoor space, it's low risk to just enjoy hearing that laughter and kind of community by proxy. <laughs> All right, so I have turned around heading back towards my starting point. Um, this is actually an extended cool down for me. So pause for a moment. There's another runner who was uh, absolutely booking it. <laughs> she looks very strong. So I wanted to make way for her and make sure you could hear me. All right, as I was saying, heading back now and just thinking, you know, all the different runners I've seen out here today. And I mentioned this is a cool down for me. I am mainly a trail runner, as I mentioned, although lately it's been more difficult for me to get to trails, just scheduling wise and had to go out of town a little bit. And when I'm on trails, the trails I tend to run on, I don't, I don't really see a lot of people. Um, so it's easy to, I suppose, settle into my own rhythm and not compare myself too much. I know as runners, that's uh, one of our biggest pitfalls, I think, for so many of us is comparison and you know that person wow so fast I can never run like that and I'm never gonna break you know X minutes or <laughs> X hours and whatever our target race is and I've been running for several years now and I, uh, I always like to say the only way I'm gonna get on a podium is if I push someone off first. <laughs> so for me, it's certainly not about the competition. And in fact, it's almost the obvious, or the opposite, the obvious. <laughs> it's been a long day, can you tell? But it's almost the opposite. Um, I find myself, as I get older, uh, shying away from competition more. Um, like in a race situation, I can feel more intimidated and overwhelmed rather than rather than that feeling of, oh, I want to go for it. I want to beat everyone or, you know, I want to beat that person. I'm sure for those of us who have run in any kind of race, you know, there's always one or two people we see who are maybe around our pace 
and we kind of lock in on them and think, you know, oh, that's my competition. Gotta beat her. <laughs> and maybe, maybe it's a lingering effect of the pandemic. I'm not sure exactly what it is. <laughs> or simply just life experiences. I don't have that so much anymore. Or reflecting on it now, perhaps it's uh, also a side effect of taking to the trails more and doing longer distances by myself. And I've really found peace in that. Um, I took up trail running and specifically distance trail running during the pandemic because initially it was so risky for me to be around anyone, especially before we had the vaccines. Um, I felt myself really kind of, you know, closing in on myself. Um, I live alone, I've worked from home for years since way before the pandemic, but Prior to that, you know, I would go to groups, took painting classes, um, was involved in um, climate change reversal uh, action groups, all sorts of things like that. Um, and I would spend maybe 30 to 50% of my days at a coffee shop or a library kind of being surrounded by that ambient energy. And then when everything, you know, very quickly turned weird, I just found myself feeling almost like I was under house arrest. And before that, I was kind of like a neighborhood jogger here and there when my health allowed. Um, I see where you're coming. And Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> it's a couple having a very involved conversation. Um, anyway, um, more so than jogging or running, I guess. <laughs> a lot of people don't like the J word, so let's uh, maybe avoid that. Um, I know uh, the joke, or maybe not so much a joke, is we don't want to be called joggers because in the news, joggers are always the ones who are hit by a car or <laughs> who discover bodies in creeks and, <laughs> you know, any number of negative associations. But anyway, um, so, um, what was I saying? Oh yes, so more than that, I was a hiker and mountain climber. Um, and when I say mountain climber, I mean the mountains in Western North Carolina. Tennessee, South Carolina, um, Georgia, not, I'm not talking like, you know, Kilimanjaro, or anything like that. Uh, but you know, some, some decent, uh, elevation gain. And I just loved being on the trails. It's always been the way that I just reset, de-stress, decompress. And early in the pandemic, in my area, they closed nearly all of the trailheads. And it was a very scary kind of closed in claustrophobic time. And when they began to slowly reopen the trailheads, I, I got out there. Um, and at that time, you know, if I came across someone else, I would go like, 10, 15 feet off the trail into the weeds. And, uh, but we didn't know, you know? Nobody knew what this thing was really, and we had no data. But um, since it was so dangerous to spend time with anyone, I, I was very isolated. And really, I started finding peace in going for slow runs on trails and finding really more remote areas to explore by trail running, 
hiking a bit and something rustling around in the woods. <laughs> Here in the city, it's usually not a big issue, but um, <laughs> ironically, I was just talking about going to these more isolated places where I uh, frequently encounter black bears. So anytime I hear an unusual rustling in the leaves, uh, my hand reaches for my bear spray. <laughs> Just in case. Um, amazing animals, but that will uh, make your bones turn to electric jello when you see one up close like that. But anyway, yeah, so I would go out to these more remote areas by myself and I just started running longer and longer distances. Um, and I completely fell in love with it. And then I thought, well, it would be cool to do, you know, some races, maybe just to run them again, <laughs> under no illusions of placing, but I thought that atmosphere would be neat. I did a couple of 5Ks several years ago. Um, and then my health got very bad. No pretty much had to tap out of most uh, exercise other than yoga, walking for a little while. But the silver lining of the pandemic was that I really gained confidence and I rediscovered that joy of just exploring, exploring and running on dirt I grew up exploring the woods, uh, running around barefoot, <laughs> uh, fascinated with uh, Native American cultures and just learning all I could about the people who had once lived in my area and really respecting their beliefs. And I think that has influenced my own um, climate activism environmental activism. Um, so it's been a great way to reconnect with that part of myself. Um, and there's something just so purely fun about going out there and, you know, running however long you want, um, coming back just covered in sweat and dirt and mud. <laughs> I look at my shoes and they're filthy. It's, you know, like a, an eight-year-old child. <laughs> There's this little uh, spark of pride in me when I see that. So, you know, I didn't uh, talk about the different groups. I'm noticing the time just now. The time flies just talking to you all like this. And um, true to form, uh, you know, runs, we often get vulnerable and reveal things we wouldn't talk about in everyday conversation with a coworker or even friends sometimes. So I want to thank you for allowing me this space. As I get closer to the starting point, there may be more traffic noise. So try to deal with that as best we can. So why don't we finish with uh, two strides since I believe this is going to wind down quickly. So give yourself a moment to just process how far you've come in the pandemic. If you've rediscovered things or maybe discovered something new about yourself or developed a part of yourself that you're particularly proud of, whether it's related to running or not, Maybe, maybe you took up uh, some traditional dancing. I don't know. <laughs> That's something I'm interested in too, any type of dance. Wish I had 17 lifetimes to pursue all of my interests, <laughs> but alas, we do what we can, right? All right. I'm at a section here where 
stride should be all right. So we're gonna do 10 or 15 seconds and we'll start in five, four, three, two, one. All right. Not an all out effort, just picking up your cadence. Breathe in that oxygen and then come to a walk, a light jog if you prefer. Take a breather. I have to chuckle. <laughs> a couple of people walked by me and it uh, seems like it's a visual reflection of what I said about Southerners being a little um, sensitive to the cold. <laughs> I, full disclosure, I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt. Um, and I'm, I'm a bit chilly, but you know, nothing dramatic, but I just passed two people who are wearing full winter gear with, you know, knitted beanies and scarves. <laughs> oh, makes me chuckle. Um, it's actually a very colorful scarf. I liked it. I like seeing bright colors. All right, bring it back up to a light jog. As we prepare for next stride. Right. Coming back into an area with these charming street lights. So it'll be nice to do strides here. And as you're ready, we're going to go in three, two, one. <sighs> Breathe in the fresh air. And we'll bring it down. Three, two, one. your breathing back down if it increased you can slow to a walk a jog whatever you feel like you need right now I think it's always important to not push ourselves too much and prioritize gratitude to our bodies and kindness to our bodies. You know, thank them for bringing us this far, for allowing us to do these things, get out here, experience all of this together. Even though we're very far apart, it's, it's an honor. Um, as I mentioned, I've had some health struggles, uh, was 10 years ago, I, uh, I woke up in a, a cardiac unit uh, from being unconscious and nurses telling me I had a seizure while I was unconscious. And while I was still coming to a doctor, trying to explain to me what was wrong and <laughs> feeling very confused. And um, in appointments after that, uh, I was told that I probably wouldn't be able to run. Uh, I would have a very hard time even walking. Uh, you know, all sorts of these dire predictions. And for a while it was true, but gradually um, things improved. And I think that was the result of a combination of my own perseverance and luck. Also trying to be kind to myself and really trying to look on the bright side. As cliche as it sounds, you know, none of us have any guarantees. And I just like to put my gratitude out there. So thank you for bearing with me in this uh, disjointed uh, together run. Uh, and 
thank you to Tina and the wonderful team at Running For Real for doing these for us and for creating this wonderful open community. Um, it's really, it's made a difference in my life and I know it has for many, many others. So I'm coming into my final cool down here, slowing to a walk as I approach the parking area. So I will Real fast. thank you all once again, and I hope to join you all someday in a, a real race or a group run or a virtual run again. And until then, take care. Hi friends, just a quick message to say a big thank you to the Running For Real team. While I may be the face of Running For Real and the voice behind the podcast, there are a group of people who are working tirelessly to provide everything that runners could need within our community, to make our community stronger, better, and evolve and grow and learn from one another. We are working really hard to make Running For Real the place we believe it can be within our community. I just want to take a moment to thank everyone on our team. That is Victoria, Stacy, Sandy, Sally, Maria, Kelsey, Kat, Jeremy, and Erica. I appreciate each and every one of you and the hard work that you put in. Now let's get back to the show. <laughs>